In this movie, we'll take a look at a feature near and dear to most animators' hearts, and that is how to ground your objects into the scene by using shadows. We're going to look at this in two capacities and in two separate movies. The first movie is going to be shadows that we create to match animated motion. And then the second movie that we'll have is looking at some of the automatic shadow features that come with anime, but ways to use them in very un-shadow-like ways. Let's go ahead and create a very basic animation, and this could be done completely with a rigged animated character, but we'll use just a circle to make things easy right here. Whoops, got too many there. T to translate, and we'll nestle this in the corner. We'll go ahead and advance our timeline down to 24. I'm going to pull this up, and we'll just have a simple bouncing type of animation. 36, get it back up. The bounce is going to decay here a little bit. And what we'll want to do is have a shadow imitate this as the animation progresses. So scrubbing the timeline, we see that we get our ball that just kind of bounces and then slows down. We want the shadow to imitate that motion, but we don't want to have to animate the shadow by hand. Now for a sphere, that wouldn't be a big idea or a big deal to do that. However, working with a character that may have arms or legs moving or something like that, it becomes much more of a complex issue. So this is the easiest way to go ahead and create a shadow that imitates the animation. Let's name our layer, and I'll name it Circle, just as a point of reference. The next thing we'll do is go ahead and duplicate this layer. Now the reason to do that is, of course, because, let me go ahead and name this Circle Shadow, is because we already have the animation in place now. So if we scrub the timeline, we'll see one circle when there's actually two there. The next step is going to be to convert this circle shadow into the actual shadow we want to have work. Now, when I work on these things normally, I have the shadow on the top until the very last step, and then I move it to the lowest point in the layer so that it's behind the other layered objects. Your first temptation may be, and what we'll do is we're going to just darken this circle up. So let me select it first. And for our fill color, we'll go ahead and just select black right now, just to, to make it very obvious. So when we go ahead and scrub our timeline now, it looks like we've got a black circle moving around. The next thing we want to do is change the shape of this so it looks like light is being cast on the object. The temptation may be to grab the skew tools up here in the top of the tools palette, but you don't want to do that. These types of things that we'll be doing with the animated shadow is where we need to actually change the layer and not the object. The reason is, is that there's no way in animate to actually keyframe object scale. While you can go ahead and keyframe where the points are, overall object size is a little more problematic. So that's another great reason to use the layer tools right here. The first thing we'll do is grab the X Shear tool right here. I'll click on the scene and drag. Now this is going way off to the side, and I know that. But we'll go ahead and grab the Layer Translate tool, keyboard shortcut 1. We're going to go ahead and bring this back to about right there. So now when we scrub the timeline, we'll see that we have the shadow extending away like it was cast because we've sheared the layer. Nothing too overly complex. Well, now that we've got the motion all right, and we see we've got the layer animation, it's time to start employing some of the little tricks that Anime Studio Pro lets you do to easily create a little more sophistication to your scene. One of those, let me highlight here, will open the Circle Shadow Palette. We're going to change the opacity of the layer to something more like 50%. So if we actually had a scene that had a background element in it, we'd be able to see that, say, for example, grass or a carpet. If this is a ball, you can see that through the shadow. The next thing we'll do is add a blur radius to our shadow. So it's more of a soft light type of solution. I'll select OK. I'll take the shadow layer and drag it down below the circle layer. You'll notice that we don't notice any of the opacity changes, and we certainly don't see any of the blurring changes right now using those special effects. Those are effects that are only seen when the actual file is rendered. So we'll do a quick render by doing keyboard shortcut command R on the Macintosh or control R on the PC. And now we see that, well, we've got the shadow right there. Maybe it's a little too soft. So it's a good reason to go ahead and check settings that you've got set. I'll open up Circle Shadow by double-clicking on it. 
we'll go to the blur radius right now for that layer and instead of 20 I'll go ahead and put 10. The next thing I want to do is not have this ball cast as a flat object. I want a little dimension to it right now. So I'm going to double click the circle layer itself and we'll look at one of the automatic features that come with Anime Studio Pro that we'll investigate more in the next movie. But what we'll do right here is layer shading. I'll turn that on this is the side that the shadow's on. We've got a blur of about 16. Let's take a look at what this looks like right now. And now we've got a little shading going right on the ball here so that the cast shadow looks even more believable. One way that we can make the ball stand out from the shadows to go ahead and maybe lighten that shadow or change the opacity on the layer. I'm not going to do that at this moment. But now when we go ahead and scrub, we can see that we've got this great animation going right now where the ball bounces, the shadow imitates the bounce. We'll do another quick render. And we've got some very easy, believable shadow animation with Anime Studio Pro.